Hello everyone. I would like to start this video with a little exercise for you to do. Please use the same data set to complete this pass analysis in M plus and generate your output file before you move on to the remaining of the video. In the previous video, I prepared a data file and a command file to complete this pass model in M plus. So for this model, I'm going to simply modify the previous command file to reflect the structural relationships in this diagram. As a matter of fact, you do not have to change the data file because it's the same one. In the M plus command file, the only place you need to modify is the model specification in the model block. Make sure you have the structural relationship in the diagram correctly captured by your statement. Remember to save the changes and run the analysis. OK, now you have your output file. M plus also provides a diagram for you to view. So you can go to this place called Diagram and View Diagram. Here you see your two exogenous variables are exercise and hardness, and those three endogenous variables this is a verification that these variable relationships are the same as you specified in your diagram. The unstandardized model parameters are also made available here in the diagram. In the parentheses, you have the standard error for that given parameter. We went over an output file in the previous video and learned how to read the information, but we skipped the section about model fit indices. How to read the model fit indices will be the focus of this video. If you recall, the evaluation of model fit is based on the discrepancy between your observed matrix and the model implied matrix. When you have good model fit, the two are very close to each other, so the residuals are minimized. Statisticians have come up with different ways to evaluate the level of discrepancies between the two matrices. So there is a variety of model fit indices. In general, they are grouped into three categories. Uh, the first category is the absolute fit indices. The second group is the comparative fit indices. And the third category is the parsimonious fit indices. Indices in the first two categories favor more complex models because models with more parameters always have better fit. But um, parsimonious fit indices also take into consideration the relative benefit and cost of adding more parameters. In this table, I have a summary of the popular model fit indices within each of the three categories. In the first category, the absolute model fit indices, we evaluate the ability of the proposed model to reproduce the observed matrix. The model chi-score statistic is used to compare the model implied versus the observed matrices and evaluate the absolute differences between the two. A non-significant model chi-score is expected to show that there's no significant difference between the two matrices. The problem with model chi-score statistic is its sensitivity to sample size. 
when you have very large sample size, it's very unlikely for your chi-square to be statistically non-significant. The second index in this category is SRMR. It stands for standardized root mean square residual. It squares the elements in the standardized residual matrix, find their mean, and take a square root. So SRMR has a range from 0 to 1, with a smaller value indicate better fit. GFI, the goodness of fit index, is a uh, R-squared type index. It also has a possible range from 0 to 1, with larger values, a value close to 1, indicating better fit. The second category, the comparative, sometimes also called incremental indices, shares the approach in which the proposed model is compared to a baseline model. In most cases, the baseline model is a null model, which means all variables are independent of each other. They are not related to each other in any way in that model. Three indices are commonly used in this category. They are the comparative fit index, the normed fit index, and the non-normed fit index. All of them have a range from 0 to 1 with a larger value, a value close to 1, indicating better fit. I am going to skip the mathematical details. You can read the textbook chapter if you're interested in learning more. Indices in the parsimonious model fit category share something in common too. They evaluate the discrepancy between the observed and the model implied matrices while taking into consideration the model simplicity. So the model fit indices will get better only when parameters that are useful to the model are added. I listed three parsimonious fit indices here. The first one is the AIC, which has no limited range. So it's often used to compare competing models. The one with smaller value indicate better fit. The RMSEA is a very popular fit index. A smaller value, smaller than 0.06, indicate very good fit. It's different from other indices because it provides a 90% confidence interval, usually an upper bound of uh, 0.10 or lower is considered as good fit. The last index is the parsimonious NFI. It has a range from 0 to 1 with larger values, a value close to 1 indicating better fit. We have talked about so many model fit indices. Here, I want to give you some suggestions. First, always provide the model chi-square statistics with its degrees freedom and the p-value. Second, provide at least one fit index from each of the three categories we just discussed. Finally, once possible, Always evaluate your model against some competing models. Remember, your model is only one of many possible models. And compare your model with other plausible alternative models will allow you to evaluate how your model fits the data relative to other competing models. All right, here is a table in which I summarized the guidelines for the popular fit indices. It's a good practice to at least report one fit index from each of the three categories. Based on their popularity, I recommend 
CFI as a comparative index, SRMR as a absolute fit index, and RMSEA as a parsimonious fit index. When you have a model with good fit, the CFI is expected to be higher than 0.95, SRMR to be lower than 0.08, RMSEA to be lower than 0.06. The guidelines can be relaxed a little bit when you put them together as joint criterion when you're evaluating a model fit. With the information we just learned, now we are ready to look at the model fit information in the M plus output file. The first thing we're going to look at is the chi-score statistic. For this model, the chi-square value is 11.11 with a degrees of freedom of 5. It's statistically significant if you use alpha equals 0.05. Remember, we want to have a non-significant chi-square statistic to indicate good model fit. Below the chi-score statistic, we have the RMSEA. The value is 0 0.057, lower than the guideline value of 0 0.06. The upper bound of the 90% confidence interval is somewhere around 0 0.10. So this index also suggests a good model fit. CFI has a possible range from 0 to 1. We want a value to be greater than 0.95 for good model fit. Here, the value for this model is 0.96. Okay, another good fit index. For SRMR, the smaller the value is, the better the model fit. It has a guideline value of 0.08. For this model, the SRMR is 0.05, which is lower than 0.08. So we have a good model fit. So based on the model fit information we have, we can conclude that the structural relationships proposed in this model is strongly supported by the observed data. There are some additional model fit information in the output file. For example, the log likelihood values. Without going into too much details, I want to tell you that you want to look at how close those two values are. The close they are, the better model fit you have. For the three information criteria numbers, there are no guidelines, so they are used for comparing competing models, model with smaller values on those AIC, BIC, adjusted BICs are considered as fitting the data better. Now, we have a model of good fit indices. We are ready to present a model with the estimate parameter values in the diagram. Also, you can report your structural equations. And we are going to learn how to report the direct effect, indirect effect, and total effect based on the standardized solution in the next videos.